My name is Karen Sermon. I'm the Director of the Australian Export Awards at Austrade, and I'm delighted to be here with my colleagues, Vicky, Sarah, Romina, and Chloe. So welcome to today's application workshop for the 62nd Australian Export Awards. To begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we gather today and pay my respects to elders past and present. For me, I pay my respects to the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains uh, and the sun that's shining here today that's beautiful. Now, for those who don't know Austrade, let me just do a quick introduction. We accelerate the growth of exporters. We attract productive foreign direct investment into Australia and we help stimulate the visitor economy. Our network of more than 100 offices in Australia and around the world give Australian businesses the competitive edge in a, in a global marketplace. Last year, we worked with Australian business to secure over 1,400 export outcomes with an estimated value of $3.7 billion. So it's a fantastic uh, opportunity to be here today with Austrade uh, delivering the Australian Export Awards each year and in, in partnership with our state and territory colleagues to tell you a bit more about this fantastic opportunity. And uh, as you can see here, Annette Katinas from Scoop Boots, who won the e-commerce award last year, uh, can attest this is truly an exciting opportunity to show the world what your business is made of. So over the next uh, 55 minutes or so, we're going to cover three things. I'll start with a brief introduction of the Australian Export Awards program and the benefits uh, it presents to your business. Then we'll move on to talk about key information and I'll invite Chloe to talk through the judging criteria and share some tips from past judges to help you put together a great application. Finally, the all important, we will run through the application portal and give you some tips on how to navigate effectively so you can submit your application. There'll be time for Q&A at the end, but we'll also be uh, running Slido that's hopefully popped up on your screen. So feel free to post questions at any stage. I should note that this session is being recorded and we'll upload the recording to YouTube. So it will be available to listen to again and we'll share it in an upcoming EDM uh, so you can recap. Now, just a note on Slido, if it hasn't popped up in your webinar screen, uh, you can look for the green Slido button to the right-hand side of your screen, or you can follow the instructions there on the slide. Uh, you're welcome to submit questions at any stage. You can do that using your own name, or you can do it anonymously. You can also like other people's questions. The most popular questions will pop up to the top of the list and we'll work through them sequentially um, and we'll, we'll uh, aim to respond as we go, um, but to recap on any important points uh, at the end. So let me get into business. The Australian Export Awards is Australia's longest running export awards program. It recognises outstanding, innovative and inspiring Australian exporters across 13 national categories. The program aims to highlight the important role of exporters in growing Australia's economy, to inspire more businesses to consider international opportunities or to diversify their export strategy, and for participating business, uh, particularly those that win at the state or territory level or at the national level, it helps drive international demand for your products and services. So let me tell you a bit more about how the program actually works. At step one, the all important businesses apply. Um, you apply online in your home state or territory export awards program. Applications are open now and they will close on the 14th of June. Now those state and territory programs go through a judging process and the winners of the 13 national categories will be announced at award ceremonies in those states and territories between August and October. So everyone has a slightly different schedule. 
but the winners in those national categories automatically progress as national finalists of the Australian Export Awards. We will invite all the national finalists to the award ceremony that's scheduled this year on the 20th of November. It's held at Parliament House in Canberra. It's a coming together of finalists, industry, business and government leaders. And there, the national winners of those 13 categories will be announced. And one of those winners will also be crowned the 62nd Australian Exporter of the Year, joining the most prestigious cohort of, of winners. Now we've got uh, a list here on this slide of those state and territory export awards programs. So you can orientate yourself to the name and familiarize yourself. Now the location you apply in, just to clarify, is based on the location of your business headquarters or your majority operations. But the application process, the questions, the judging criteria are exactly the same for those 13 award categories in all of these programs. I do want to acknowledge our state and territory partners. They put in a huge amount of work over the year, and I know a number of you are on this call today, so thank you very much for your support. We'll provide some guidance uh, a little bit later on how you can contact them for information. So whether you're a large exporter, you're established, or you're relatively new to the export game, there is an award category for you. This slide shows you that list of the 13 national award categories I mentioned. You can apply in one or more categories. You just need to check that you are eligible for both the program and for any specific award categories that have unique eligibility criteria. And you can see some of those examples are listed on the screen. Make sure you check out the Export Awards, Australian Export Awards website for information on all of these categories and the eligibility criteria. I should note as well that some of the state and territory programs have additional award categories. And whilst these categories don't progress through to the national program, they also give you an extra opportunity to be recognized in your home location. So look out for them at the end of the application form and maximize your chances for success. Now, the all important question, why apply? Of course, this takes time, but there's lots in it for you. You'll get great recognition in your state or territory. And if you win there, you'll get that significant profile benefit at the national level as well. The program gives you the opportunity to develop new connections within your home state or territory with government and export support agencies, with Austrade, with program sponsors, with industry leaders, and with other business applicants. As I mentioned, national finalists are invited to the National Ceremony at Parliament House, which in itself is a really high profile celebration and a great networking opportunity. We invite media and marketing experts across the program year to secure for us media coverage of finalists and national winners. And we do that in Australia and in international markets. The benefit here is that it can create awareness of your brand and drive further demand for your uh, products or services. Many businesses also tell us that they benefit from the application process itself. It can help to refine your marketing pitch, to fine tune your export plan, or to build out a broader business strategy that will help you execute on your exports into the future. So to share more about the benefits, uh, we've created a short video featuring a number of last year's winners. This was recorded on site at Parliament House immediately having come off the stage. So you can see the excitement uh, in each of these businesses as, as they've just accepted their award. So stand by and we will cue that video. And uh, just while we're pausing, I can see a question, can you apply to more than one category? Yes, you can. I think receiving an export award for us is, is really significant in terms of being able to communicate globally just how significant we are and what a role we play in the Australian economy uh, and also you know, me making them feel confident that we're a business that's really here to stay. I think it's been fantastic internally for our team. 
I think we, we've had uh, people at the New South Wales Awards. It was a great night where we got to recognise more than just people like me who are, who are the founders, but actually other people on the team as well. Look, I think in massively globally competitive markets like cybersecurity, any recognition from the Australian government is a huge leg up for us. Uh, this uh, award for Sunrise is just absolutely outstanding. I think for small businesses as well as large businesses like ours, it gives the exposure that um, companies need. Events like this, it's absolutely amazing to be able to showcase your product and let the whole world or the whole of Australia know what we do. The Australian Export Awards are such a wonderful way to recognise the amazing organisations that do that are really leading on the world stage. Winning the Australian Export Award really puts us on the map internationally. The National Award, uh, that's going to put us on a whole nother level to help open up new customers. It's just a pinnacle for Red Ark because it means that we're out there matching it with the best of the best on a global scale and developing with world-class products. So, you know, it's a great recognition for all the hard work in our manufacturing facility in South Australia, all 391 global staff that we employ um, around the world. It's a real great recognition of the work we're doing internationally which comes off the back of the work we're doing domestically in Australia. What it means for our company to win this award, uh, it's actually really inspiring. It just instills a new sense of energy uh, that it just invigorates the entire team to just do what we do just a lot better, a lot harder. Well, this award is amazing to receive because, uh, you know, for the first time in a long while, we'll be saying we have a, a an award winning, an award winning technology. Oh, the Australian Export Awards means a huge amount to us. We're a small team, we're a really close knit team and all of this hard work that we've done to try and get in and potentially even disrupt an industry which is quite traditional in its ways is huge and it means a lot to us. The awards are just recognition of that. So there you have it. Uh, great testament from uh, from those past winners uh, from last year uh, about the range of benefits that they see in the program. I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, good to see the lag caught up uh, with the uh, sound eventually. So how do you win? How do you be one of those businesses that's just accepted an award and come off to talk about um, how it feels? Let me hand over to my colleague, Chloe Yole, Austrade Global Engagement Manager, to talk about the judging criteria and to share some tips from past judges. Thank you, Chloe. Thanks, Karen. Um, I have worked firsthand with a number of our businesses who have been recognized through this program, so I can vouch for the benefits you have just covered. Um, I have also been a judge for the past four years. It's important that businesses prepare. So on the export awards page, as you can see on the screen, you can read through the judging criteria against each application question. It's really important that you understand what the judges are looking for. And also check, check out the tips for applying. There are a few um, key areas you should address in your application. Make sure you use information, data, and examples to help you support the po points around your competitive advantage, your recent export success, and your growth trajectory, your growth potential. Um, talk about your business leadership and innovation in international business. Demonstrate that you have your commitment to diversity to inclusion and the sustainability or any other ways that you can, you have made a positive social impact. And also make a strong case around how exports are contributing to your business expansion. Based on my experience and also the feedback from a number of uh, past judges, we have put together a few tips under the six headings to help you prepare and submit a strong standout application. The number one is why you. It's important to write a clear summary of your value proposition, why you do what you do, why you have used this particular strategy and why this has been working out well for you, how you are unique, what you have done differently from the competition. 
Number two is to keep it simple. Prepare early so you have enough time to get feedback from across your organization to give you um, very relevant and recent um, examples. Keep your responses clear. Try to avoid jargons or big language. Number three, um, ace the essentials. Demonstrate a clear export plan or strategy, including what markets you are targeting, why and how. Give evidence, use examples and data to tell what you have done and what you plan to do next. Export Awards is a program to recognize and celebrate your success, so don't be humble. Number four, to communicate your strength. Tell the judges about the strengths of your products, your service, what makes them marketable or impactful. Demonstrate your financial position and how you will continue to grow your international business. Really highlight any commu community or um, sustainability measures that make you stand out. Be sure to let the judge know any features that have underpinned your success. Number five, um, explain the challenges you have faced. We all know that success in export business is not all about like increases in numbers. So tell the judge the challenges you have faced and highlight what you have done to overcome them. Remember to focus on your international business when you tell those stories. Number six, attention to detail. It's important that avoid um, simple mistakes that can negatively impact your overall score. Be prepared. Don't assume the judge to know your business. So try to use plain language to avoid acronyms and explain the technical terms. And don't forget to showcase the breadth of your exports, even if you are currently only focusing on one market, uh, strongly focusing on one market, but give judges an idea of what you are doing in other markets to diversify and what your future plans are. Lastly, make sure you apply. You can't win an award if you don't apply. You will need to um, supply some financial information to validate the claims throughout the application. So now I will hand back to Karen to talk more about that aspect. Thanks very much, Chloe. Uh, great tips there. And as a reminder, we have a summary of those top tips from our past judges on the Export Awards uh, website on the apply page. So you can revisit all of those great tips. Um, as mentioned, when looking, uh, there are some questions around uh, your finances, and this is really to help validate the story and the claims that you've made through uh, your responses to other questions. So when looking at that financial input, the judges will consider the soundness of your financial strategy and your planning, particularly in respect of how it will support your international growth. So they're looking for a sound financial base so that could be cash or assets, other, other re uh, revenue sources. Um, but it's not about bigger is better. And, and uh, you know, you'll see previous winners are you know, very small through to very big. But it is important to enable the judges to understand and consider your exports as a proportion of total revenue, the export value and any year on year changes. Um, and this year you can actually explain uh, provide a little bit of feedback around uh, reasons for any year-on-year -year changes um, and also to share export revenue by key export markets. That helps judges understand uh, where you're focused, where you might be diversifying or expanding your export footprint. It's really important to supply accurate data across three financial years with the exception of businesses applying in the emerging exporter category where you can supply uh, that data for up to three years, uh, or if you're an ASX listed company, where we ask that you upload a copy of your last financial year report. Estimates can only be provided for the current financial year. Uh, rest assured, the data is kept confidential. Uh, but as I said, please do prepare in advance. Don't leave this section or in fact any other section 
to the last day because you will need to spend a little bit of time uh, getting that together. So that covers off uh, section two, uh, judging. Uh, I'd like now to hand over to program advisor Romina Tanazzi to talk through a little bit more around how to prepare and the all important how to apply. Over to you, Romina. Thank you, Karen. Um, so you can find out more about all the questions you will need to respond to on the Australian Exports Awards website under the apply section. Um, there is a section called application preview. Um, the questions change a bit each year, so it's worthwhile having a look at the questions before you actually start your application. In that preview, you can see which questions are scored and their relative um, weightings. We've also included tips to help focus your responses in line with the judging criteria that Chloe just went through. Um, so as a reminder, before you start your application, please remember, read the eligibility guidelines, identify one or more categories that, uh, to apply in, and review how the judges will assess your responses, and review the questions and weightings to prepare your responses. From the Export Awards website apply page, you'll find all the important link to the online application portal. Once you're ready, just select apply now. On the portal landing page, select the state or territory you wish to apply in. You'll be able to create an account and sign back in using the same screen. Once you've read the key information, select start responding which is towards the um, bottom of the page and begin your responses. The application form is split into sections. You only see the sections relevant to you based on the categories that you have selected. You can move between the sections to complete your application in any order that you wish. So depending on how many categories you select, the number of sections may, may change. If you apply in one category, for example, there will be nine sections to complete. The questionnaire tab shows you the progress in each section. There are a few questions to pay particular attention to. Your business introduction will be used for promotional purposes. So keep it clear and factual. It is surprising still how often we read responses to this section and we still do not understand what clearly um, what the business does. So please complete your application paying also attention to the word count, which is you can see on the right hand side of your, the response. You need to provide export revenue from international sales to your key export markets for the past three years or less for the emerging exporter category. As Karen touched on, you also need to supply information on your assets, liabilities, in profit or loss. You must also upload at least one logo and three images. Only JPG, JPEG and PNG files formats are accepted. So if you need technical help, there are some options. You can use the um, blue help button that you'll find in every screen of the portal. You can also call the number on the screen or email the support um, line during the business hours. If you have any questions instead of regarding the questions, the eligibility criteria, um, so please, for those, please contact um, the State and Territory Program Coordinator and there is a link on the chat right now on how to do that. So before you submit, Review your responses and follow prompts to finalise any incomplete sections. You can only submit when all the mandatory questions are complete. At the final step, the system will prompt you if there are incomplete responses that you'll need to review. Click Submit and lock real responses to submit your entire application. If you have forgotten something, you, something, you can still edit um, your application um, before the deadline, which is June 14. So you can just simply return to the application by going back to the portal and um, signing in and selecting reopen um, your application, um, make your edits and then 
to and then don't forget to submit once you have finalized your application. So that's the end of the how to to um, apply online. So I think now we can move on to the Q and A session. And I'll hand it over to you, Karen, to for our first questions. Thank you, Romina. I hope that has covered off all the key questions you were wondering about, but no doubt there are uh, things you may want to recap or questions you've uh, not been, uh, points we've made that have not been clear to you. So please uh, feel free, any question is a good question uh, to jump into Slido and uh, we'll work our way through uh, from top to bottom. So I'm just uh, navigating myself around Slido. Um, there's a question here, can you outline the evaluation process for the Australian Export Awards? What criteria are used to assess applicants and determine the winners? Uh, now we've touched on the application, uh, the, sorry, the judging criteria. So on the Export Awards uh, website on that apply page, if you hit the uh, judging criteria tab, you'll actually see question by question where a, a where where we're guiding the judges to consider um, their assessment of those questions. Um, all of the judges work to this common set of judging criteria. So if you follow that information, you'll start in a very good place, uh, ensuring that your responses are relevant to the guidance the judges have received. In terms of the process, so as we uh, mentioned, you apply initially in your home state or territory. So in the first round, applications are judged uh, in your home state or territory. So let's just pick New South Wales as an example. So there will be judges for New South Wales assessing all of the applications that come through, um, where each applicant in a given criteria is assessed against other applicants in that, uh, sorry, in that category. And ultimately, uh, at the state and territory level, winners will be determined across those uh, national awards. And if the state or territory is running uh, additional awards, they'll also be going through the judging process at the same time. The winners will be announced at those state and territory awards ceremonies. And as soon as they are announced, we are notified uh, at the national level uh, of those national finalists and those businesses go through a second round judging process. National finalists uh, come to the national awards and are then uh, in it to win it. Um, we'll announce the 13 national category winners and the Australian Exporter of the Year on the night. Thank you, Karen. I think that I can see a couple of questions that I might be able to answer. Um, we can see, can we add videos in our application? Um, the only attachments that are um, accepted on the application are actually uh, the images that, as we suggested on the attachment section, it's, which is uh, images that depict uh, your services or products that you're representing um, and your logos. So um, those are the attachments accepted. And also if you've answered the question um, uh, yes to uh, I am an ASX listed company, you'll be prompted to upload um, PDF of the latest financial report. So those are the only attachments that will be accepted in the application form. There was another question. I think we've answered the one. Can you apply more than one category? Yes, certainly you can. And there was another question on saying if you can re go back. To, am I able to start my application and come back to it later? Yes, definitely you can until um, uh, the uh, to the deadline of uh, June 14. So um, we encouraged you to do that before then. Um, let's see what. It... If um, hmm. so, I'm just trying to see what other questions are coming through. Um, I can touch on, your end? I'll touch on a couple of questions related to categories. So uh, someone's just asked about small business and the definition there. So to, a, to be eligible for the small business award category, 
uh, you need to have total annual sales not exceeding 10 million Australian dollars. Um, so that's the that's the threshold. It's consistent with the ATO definition of a small business. Uh, and someone else has asked about emerging exporter. So the eligibility there is that you've been exporting for up to three years. So for anyone that has been exporting longer than three years, you can't apply for the emerging exporter award. But if you are new to export, you've been exporting for one or two or three years, you are still welcome to apply in any other category that you are eligible for. So I hope that clarifies those two questions. What else have we got there, Vicky? Just had a question about um, downloading a template of the application form to share with other um, departments within your business, which is a great idea to share the load. Um, and you can absolutely do that. We've put a link um, into the chat and we'll be sending it out after the webinar as well. Um, there's an online version of the questions. There's also, once you start your application, an ability to download the application and then any of your answers um, for offline use as well. Thank you, Vicky. I can see another question. Does applying more than one category require separate applications or are there just additional sections to complete? Um, uh, that's a good thing. You can you only apply it once um, for um, a state level and uh, you can apply in more than one category there. So it's just one application. And as you said, depending on the categories that you select, it, that will depend on how the length of your application, the sections that will appear. If so I can just touch on that as well. So if you are applying in multiple categories, you'll, you'll get all of the standard application questions and then you'll get an additional question for each category that you have selected please make sure you don't copy and paste. You should be tailoring your response to each category question according to the intent of that question. So if it is the small business question, think about, you know, as a small business, uh, how you would reflect on that. If it's the agribusiness, food and beverages category, think about how you showcase your credentials in that sector. Um, that's important because that will obviously impact um, the judge's assessment in, in your responses to those categories. Now, I've, I've seen another one I want to jump in on. Is selling to New Zealand counted as an export? 100% yes, it is. It might be close to us, but it is definitely an export market. It's one of Australia's largest export markets because of the proximity. Um, and I just wanted to also clarify, some people don't realise that selling to international visitors in Australia or international students in Australia is still considered an export. So for those of you who are working in the visitor economy or attracting international buyers of your uh, artworks or creative um, products here in Australia, or you're selling education products, curriculum or ed tech to students who procure those products or services in Australia, they are still exports. You do just need to make sure that you're able to split out your revenue from those customers, from those buyers, from your domestic revenue. So sometimes people forget that uh, that those are still exports. I have a question. Is there an application fee? Should... No, there isn't an application fee to apply in the Australian Export Award. Any other questions, Vicky, on your end? There's a question here, will the presentation be shared? Uh, yes, we will uh, send that out attached to a thank you email. So you'll have access to, uh, to the information that we've shared today. And as I mentioned, the recording will be circulated um, via our uh, EDM. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to the Export Awards newsletter, you can jump onto our website and do that. And then we'll be sure to um, I keep you in touch with all of the latest news. Uh, there's a few more questions that have been, uh, we've given a written response to. Um, how many businesses apply was one. So last year we had 331 applicants. Uh, the previous year it was close to 300. So that gives you a bit of a, a reference. 
and there's a question about subsidiaries. Um, so the the key point here is that you apply using an ABN and your responses should reflect the scope of the business under that ABN. So if you're a subsidiary and you have a unique ABN, then you can apply under that ABN and name and talk about the uh, expertise, experience, plans and successes of that business as a subsidiary. If you're a subsidiary but you sit under the same umbrella ABN, then you need to apply under that uh, umbrella organisation and think about how you craft the narrative reflecting uh, the, the overall business outputs. So uh, I hope that's clear. The ABN is a defining element as to what entity you need to apply under uh, and, and how you would demonstrate your successes uh, as that organisation. Um, there's one more question, just what were the common things you saw in last year's applications that were liked or not liked? Um, so hopefully we've um, helped to clarify a, a lot of the things our judges, and, and this was both uh, Austrade and industry judges reflected on. Um, I think a bugbear is, is um, simple mistakes and not responding to the question. So as I said, if you can start your journey by looking at the judging criteria and understanding in each question what the judges are looking for, you're off to a very good start because, uh, you know, judges go through a high volume of applications uh, and they really want a response that is relevant to each question to ensure that they're able to assess it effectively, that it's free from errors and that it's really compelling. So spend a bit of time thinking about how you craft the story over the whole application to demonstrate your successes and make sure you back it up with examples and evidence to bring that to life. Karen, I can see a couple of questions on my um, address um, about emerging exporter. Um, so they're asking about if a company has exported for less than three years, is emerging exporter the only category that it can apply for? Uh, yes. Uh, if you apply for the emerging exporter uh, category, you, you can have less than three years um, financials. For the other categories, you will require three years of financials. The appeals process for unsuccessful applications. We recommend that you talk to your state and territory um, export awards program partner, um, which we put the link in in the chat, um, or get in touch if it's through the national, get in touch with the national team for feedback. Yes, and I sh and and worth pointing out at the, at the national level, if you are successful in winning um, at your state or territory level, and you come through to nationals. Um, we do provide uh, anonymised feedback from the judges um, on request uh, to help you understand the assessment that the judges have made. So if, uh, if you get through to that point in the program and you would like to uh, receive that feedback, we, we do reach out and let you know um, and you're able to advise us on who, who we should share that information with. And, and that can help you just to you know, not not just tweak a future application, but potentially tweak your marketing pitch or your or your planning uh, for greater success into future into the future. All right, are we are we at a wrap? I'm sorry, I'm I'm looking across screens. Do we think, Vicky, we've covered off all of the questions? So, if anyone's got any outstanding questions, um, please feel free to contact us. Like Karen mentioned, we'll be sending out an email after this webinar. Um, we'll have our contact details on there, or obviously the state and territory uh, partners as well. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you giving us your time this morning. I'd like to thank my colleagues, uh, Chloe, Romina, Vicky, and Sarah. Uh, we will give you back some time um, since we've uh, come to a conclusion of the questions, but as Vicky said, you're welcome to contact us uh, at the Export Awards team if you have subsequent questions. I just want to draw your attention, if you haven't noticed it, to my background picture. I couldn't help but use it because I want you to finish uh, picturing yourself up on the stage this year 
uh, name in lights, crowd cheering, social media posts going out. It's a really exciting opportunity and, and we want uh, you to think of yourself up here. Um, you have to be in it to win it. So don't forget to go to the Export Awards website to find out more, to uh, check out all the information we've talked through today and to hit the Apply Now button to start your application. Uh, applications will close on the 14th of uh, June. Look out for the thank you email that will come with a link to today's presentation. Uh, look forward to hopefully meeting some of you over the course of the year and to seeing you at the National Ceremony in Canberra. With that, I'll thank you again for your time and we'll close. Have a great day, everybody.